Hey friends, David Watts here. Brand new video for you. I'm calling Four Tips for Success with Luminar 2018. Brand new version. Maybe you just downloaded it. Maybe you're just trying to get acquainted with it. Here's four tips uh, I hope will help you uh, to get the most out of Luminar 2018. Big disclaimer, this is not all the tips that are possible, of course. This is not a comprehensive list of ways you can succeed. Just four ideas for you. So, uh, number one, uh, get to know the environment. Uh, we're in Luminar. You see that on my screen here, and you may say, wow, all you've got is the image up there. And by the way, this is not a very fancy image. It's just a typical picture you or I might take. I'm not going to win any awards, of course. Um, but get to know the environment. And uh, the, the first thing I would point out is you've got two key buttons up here in the upper right. That my screen looks really clean right now because I've closed up some of these panels. So this first button opens up the bottom panel and you can see now a bunch of presets that are available to me. Um, I may want uh, to use the image enhancer. I may instead prefer uh, the vivid uh, preset. It takes it just a moment to apply or maybe the sky enhancer. Uh, so get to know these, uh, know that you can flip between these uh, nice and easily. Get to know the fact that there are categories here uh, with this category button. Uh, you may prefer uh, the outdoor. Uh, let's see, fix a dark landscape. Not sure that's appropriate here. Uh, go for landscape soft, black and white. Uh, so get to know these a little bit. Uh, know that they exist, know how to move around between them. You'll see Luminar flipping around just a bit as it catches up with my, uh, my changes. So just get to know uh, that these presets are out there. Uh, I typically don't use those a whole lot, but know that they are there. And know that you can adjust the amount uh, by which these presets are applied. So uh, now I've, I've brought that particular one down just a bit in its intensity. You might see it better if I use something like this. And then if I, I'll give it just a second to process. And then if I bring it down a bit, you can see. So you can adjust the, uh, the intensity of the effect, essentially, and just know that they're out there. Now, the second thing about the environment I'd encourage you to know is the side panel, of course. And this will be really essential as you get a bit more involved with, uh, with Luminar. So when you're picking one of these, let's take uh, Colors of the Fall. Uh, what it has done for you is it has stacked up a number of filters. So this is the tone filter, the saturation and vibrance filter, foliage enhancer, and the clarity filter. And all of these you can close up if you need to uh, clean things up a little bit. Now you can see the four filters. Know that what you can do after it has applied one of these is you can come in here and further tweak this now. And you can lower the amount, for example. You could take uh, this one and lower the saturation, uh, whatever you know you desire. So just know that when you apply one of the presets, it's going to apply filters and you can still tweak those to get the results you want. Okay, so that's those a couple of key things about the environment. Another thing to know is the history. And up here, you will have a full history of everything you, you did. The newest will be up at the top. So as you see, original, then tone, we added that filter, clarity, dehaze. That was part of just some of the playing around I was doing. And here's just uh, sort of a full review of everything that, that has been done. Uh, if I want to go back to something, I can say, let's go back to the way it was right here, nearly at the very beginning. Or if I want to go back to the original, there I can go back to the, the very original. Or if I want to go back up and I say, no, I actually preferred this version up here. So it's kept all this for you. And uh, just know that the history is there. Know that you can uh, back up. You can undo uh, quite easily. Uh, know that you've got the ability to create a split screen and see the difference. This is the original, uh, and this is where we are so far in our editing. Uh, know that you can do the same by holding down this button, the little eye symbol. And there it is before, as our original image. There it is after. We'll get rid of that split screen to make it more uh, uh, sort of consistent. Know that you've certainly got the ability to uh, zoom in and out. Uh, I haven't seen it documented per se, but know that you can double click and zoom into 100% and double click and zoom back out. 
So 100% is always a great way to view your images. If you're looking to see, uh, look at sharpness or noise reduction, uh, just know that uh, double click will get you there right away. You can see the birds in this image. You can see the lights on this uh, power plant. Okay, so um, it is often good though to keep the environment clean. I often work like this. I'll have the side panel open, but not the bottom panel. But you know, use it to your uh, your taste and your your plans. Okay, let's go back to the very original because those are just a couple things I wanted to show you about the environment. Uh, oh, maybe one other thing. Don't forget when you do f file save, you are saving a Luminar. Uh, file type and what uh, that's a proprietary format for Luminar and you perhaps and I think you probably do unless you're short on space you want to save the original resources that is your original image to the document uh, this way if you lose your JPEG you've still got it you know buried within this Luminar file you also want to save the history uh, to the document. All this history of, of the changes you've made, what you did, I think it's a good idea. Now the files are big. Now this was a raw file that started at 50 megabytes anyway, so it's going to be big uh, to begin with. But these files will get quite big, so just know that. So when you save, when you do file save, you're saving a Luminar format file. When you want to save it out as a JPEG or something else, you want to do an export. All right. So here's where you can do your export. You can decide to sharpen it a little bit. You can, of course, choose the format. Uh, PNG can be good for web browsing, um, so, but JPEG is what most of us use most of the time. If you need to make it a little smaller, you can reduce the quality. At, at full high, those will be quite big, probably unnecessary, but keep it somewhere in this upper range. You can resize it. You can say, no, 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 I don't want it quite that big. Uh, instead of, uh, let's go back to the original so you can see the original values again. It's 6,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels. Uh, let's say now instead I want that dimension to be 2,000 pixels, uh, something like that. So you can you can resize it quite easily. You can even do a little sharpening if you want to uh, while you save it out. Okay, so that's maybe enough about the environment. That ought to get you uh, functional. Oh, a couple other quick things I guess I should show. Here's your histogram. Helps to show you the distribution of uh, light, really an intensity of light within your image. Uh, this uh, layers tab, we'll talk about layers more, uh, perhaps another video, but uh, it opens or closes this layers section. Uh, and then uh, the uh, information tab, very tiny, just the ISO, uh, the focal length of the lens, and uh, the, the f-stop uh, when you took the image. So that's a little bit about the environment. Okay, so second tip for success, um, use the filters and uh, use them in, in a way that gets you the results you want. The first thing I'd actually say, it's not a filter, but it is under the tool menu, is I see a fair amount of images uh, that get shared, and they can otherwise be a nice image, but the horizon is kind of a mess. Uh, generally speaking, the horizon should be straight. Now, when we take it with our camera, we don't see it often. Our brain sort of, um, you know, overlooks it, and often when we have it as a final image, uh, our brain may overlook it, but make a point of going into crop, probably a good idea to keep the original aspect ratio of the image. So you're not distorting the image too much or the dimensions of the image, but you don't have to. You could do a just sort of a free uh, adjustment. But I like to keep it the original aspect ratio. And then just come over here to the right, hold down your mouse, and you'll get all these extra little grid lines. And usually there'll be a grid line uh, that works out nicely for the horizon. So if you'll notice, I can't quite move the mouse, but you'll notice this grid line uh, lines up really nicely with the horizon uh, there at the power plant, that, that horizontal edge, not truly the horizon, but call it the edge of the lake. And it also basically works uh, for the verticals, the smokestacks there basically are straight. So release and hit enter or hit done in the upper right corner, and now you've got a straight horizon. So anyway, use the filters. That's our second key point. Use the filters to improve your image. You've got some workspaces. If you're just getting started, you probably like Quick and Awesome. It gives you three filters, accent, saturation, and clarity. This accent uses a bit of artificial intelligence. I find if you give it a click about a third of the way through, you often will get amazing results pretty fast. 
Saturation and vibrance, I typically find, uh, I like to, this is personal, reduce saturation a little bit, maybe it's just my camera, and bring up vibrance just a little. Vibrance will bring up some of those uh, softer pastel type colors. And then clarity often just gives uh, just an added sense of clarity. You may, could see what, you, you may have been able to see what it did in the clouds there. Let's turn the filter off, which you can always do over here on the right side. Looks like a little eye. Turn it off, turn it back on. So it's nice to flip back and forth and see what you've got. So use the filters. Lots of other filters. When you say add filters, you'll get a whole list of them. They're categorized. They're not alphabetical order, but you should be able to search if you're looking for something in particular. You just click on it and it adds down here at the bottom. You can drag these up and sometimes the sequence will matter. Sometimes you'll get a better result by dragging something up higher. You can close this filters catalog, by the way. And then you can do some, uh, some extra work uh, here, for example. Uh, so you can drag that around and bring it up higher if you think you get better results there. So just know how to add those filters. The other thing to do is know how to save this as your own workspace. So you may decide, hey, these four filters work great for a lot of what I'm doing. So come in here under custom, where, where it says custom in this case, drop down and just save it as new workspace. Give it a name, call it uh, David's Preferred. And now we've always got that. So I can just quickly go to it. I can even make it my default if I want to set as default. Uh, but anyway, just know that that's the case. So learn how to use the filters. That's uh, tip number two. Tip number three is learn how to use them uh, selectively. Um, sometimes filters don't need to be applied to the whole image. So let me go back to the original image and uh, with the use of history, we can do that. Here's the original image. I'm going to just crop it again really fast um, for the sake of uh, visuals. And let's just uh, line up the horizon a little bit better. And let's just suppose, we'll use my, my David's preferred again, um, that I want to boost uh, saturation. But I don't want it all in this grass. It just looks too green. I really just want some better skies. So right here, you've got uh, a brush. Click brush. And you can change your uh, brush sizes by using the little bracket keys. Usually it's on the right side of your keyboard to make that brush smaller or larger. You can also do it up here. You can change the size, the softness, also the opacity, uh, whether the full effect is applying uh, where this brush makes its mark or whether it's a partial effect. You can change other brush. Here's, here's where you can really change these, uh, the brush settings. Uh, if you had a, uh, a tablet or pen, you can also change uh, some of these, these other factors as well. So anyway, the key is you, you can change the saturation, boost it way up, and you can say, oh, it's terrible in the green. So now with the brush, just brush. And what will happen is that filter it becomes selective and it becomes selective only to the places that you are brushing. So I'm being super quick just to show you the effect, but you get the idea. It's left our green alone while the sky gets a nicer effect. So just know that all of these filters down in Luminar 2018 can be applied in a very selective way. If you bring the clarity up and you say, oh, I like it there, but um, I only really want it here in this grass. So same thing, uh, use the brush click on brush and apply the clarity only to the grass. And that's, that's only where you're going to get that clarity effect now. And by the way, if you want to see where you have brushed, come up here, click the little eye. And again, you'll see the area that you brushed. And this can be really good to help you uh, double check your work. I'm being super quick and not very neat at all with this, but I'm just trying to show the principle. Turn the, uh, uh, you can turn it off and on. And, and this is a way we can apply filters, but apply them in a very selective sort of way. Okay, so that's tip number three. Uh, let's just recap. Know the environment. That's number one. Number two, use the filters. Number three, um, uh, use the filters selectively. And then here's the third. I'm going to go back one last time just to my original. I won't bother cropping it this time. Actually, what I can do is I can go back to the version that was cropped. That's, that's a proper use of history. Okay, let's go back. Uh, we'll go back to my um, uh, David's Preferred. 
and let's do something like this. Let's take the AI filter way up. The third, uh, the fourth and final tip is uh, my suggestion, but this is artistic, but my suggestion, don't overdo it. The filters are really powerful. You can really crank them up. Let's, let's make an example here. Um, you can really do something like this. And maybe I can even uh, do something here just to really make it pronounced. Now, if you really like that, great. But probably that's way overdone. Um, sometimes that's the effect you want. And sometimes that's what you're going for. You're looking for a real grungy sort of image. Uh, you can see we put some of the adjustments that was still processing. But that, to most people, is just too much. One of the tips that it's too much is the colors just don't look realistic anymore. They become almost cartoonish or garish even. Another tip that maybe you've overdone it is you get these halos around objects. So start looking for these halos. You can see it here. See the white around here? See how it sort of follows around these objects? And that's not realistic and not natural. Now, again, there may be a place for it. Who's to argue with, uh, with reasonable art, right? Um, but generally speaking, this is overdone. So that's my fourth bit of advice. Don't overdo it. Um, let's, with the courtesy of our history, go back to the original image. I think you will generally find that if you, uh, if you keep it kind of reasonable, use a little bit of boost, maybe... A little bit of sa uh, saturation or vibrance. Saturation is pretty powerful too, so you can get out of hand with saturation. Um, a, a nice image, a very pleasing image, but you're keeping it kind of real and uh, reasonable. But ultimately, your choice. But that's my advice. Anyway, I hope these four tips might help if you're brand new with Luminar. Uh, I know I've covered some things quickly. I've got some other videos that might be helpful uh, as well. You can look at the rest of our videos. Maybe this one helps a little bit. Four tips. Uh, get to know the environment. Number two, get to know the filters. Number three, use the filter selectively. That's powerful. Number four, don't overdo it. Unless you really just want to overdo it. In that case, feel free. But otherwise, generally, don't overdo it. Hey, if you like Luminar, you know, download the uh, trial version if you don't have it yet. Uh, if you need to buy a copy or upgrade, I'll put a link in there. I am an affiliate. Uh, so full disclosure, we get a few dollars if you buy through us. So um, that's not really the important thing. The important thing is have fun, make some nice pictures, enjoy your work, and uh, hope this helps. Have a good day.